G'day everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Adobe InDesign um, to create some magazine design elements that you may find in on the front covers or inside of a, of a magazine uh, by using some simple shapes and some text. Now uh, what I've done is I've created I've already created these by looking um, through some magazines and I've used InDesign to, to um, create, recreate them and I'll get you guys to follow along and do the same thing. Now what I've, I haven't got the examples here that I've used but I'll show you those in class. Now this first one here is a just a simple balloon that I created. Now I didn't find this anyway, this is just something that I came up with. So if you use the ellipse tool and you draw out a, an ellipse like that and let's fill the let's set the fill color to sorry that's the stroke let's set the fill color to yellow and i'm just going to use the pencil tool here just to draw a line like that i might up the stroke to two points there and i'll just bring it on so it's touching the edge of my balloon just like that um i'm going to up the stroke there to two as well if I zoom in a bit, there's our there's our balloon there. Now, if you press the W key, it gets rid of all the guidelines or the bounding box lines. Okay, and you can see your design better. Now, there's one little more little thing for that. I'm going to get another ellipse tool, and I'm going to just draw out another little circle like this. And I'm just going to set the no stroke. I'm just going to have the fill of white. Probably going to lose it. No, there it is. And I'm just going to put that on top of there, so it's a little shine, shiny part of the balloon where the light hits it. So if I press W, there's our little balloon. All right. If you want the black stroke around there, you could. Now I want this all together so that I can move it. I'm going to highlight everything by clicking and dragging, and then right click, group, and now I can move this guy all around together. All right. I'm going to put him off the page for now, and let's. Go ear back in, um, pan around with a space bar and click. Let's uh, have a go at this, look at this shape here. Now, in InDesign you'll notice that there's only a few tools that you can use here. Um, say I want a diamond for example. This is how I'm going to draw a diamond with the rectangle tool. So if I grab that, and if I hold the shift key and draw out a square, a perfect square, um, let's just fill it with, um, we'll fill it with yellow, we'll keep it the same with an outline in black, that's good. Um, now, if I uh, go to the corner and I rotate it, I'm gonna hold shift down again when I rotate it so that it's gonna snap at kind of 45 degrees, I think, just like that. And we've got a bit of a diamond shape there. Now, if I wanna stretch this, I can't, all I can do is I can move it up and down and make it bigger and smaller, but I, I wanna stretch it. So if you use the direct selection tool, um, the trick, just be careful here, if I use the direct selection tool now, it's not going to work. I have to deselect it by clicking in space and then going back over and selecting. And now you'll notice that my little corners have turned to white instead of the blue that they were. Now what I can do is I can now stretch. Okay, now I'm going to hold shift so it just stretches directly above. And I'm going to go down here and I'll stretch it directly below as well. Alright, and then we've got this nice diamond shape. Okay, I'm just going to go back, Command-Z, to I've got my square and undo that. Now, say I want to make this shape here, which I'm going to use in this design element down here. Uh, I'm going to grab this corner here, and if I just start to bend this corner in here, you can start to see I've made that shape there. All right, how easy is that? Undo that. I can also... Um, click off and on, hold shift, and if I, by holding shift, it's just going to keep it directly in line with the other corner, like that. Alright, and that's that shape, I might bring it in just a little bit more, there we go. Alright, I'm going to change the colour to black, um, and the stroke set to black, and that's okay. Alright, let's move this guy aside for the moment, because what we want to do is we want to now, if I zoom in over here, we want to create this design element here. Now that's really easy to do. All it is is that shape we just created with a couple of text boxes and the circle, the ellipse tool. All right, so firstly what we'll do is we'll get the ellipse tool and we're going to draw out a perfect circle. Now I'm going to hold the shift button and the option or alt key and just click and drag that out there so I get this perfect circle. Now the stroke set to black which is fine. Let's set the fill to yellow. We'll keep it the same colors. 
And now what we can do is we can bring this, uh, we won't bring that in yet, we'll get the text, we'll get a couple of text boxes, all right? So what we wanna do, we want a text box and we're gonna write exclusive first. It's all in capital letters and it's, um, it's, it's black. The color of the text is black. I'll show you these design elements as in class time. So with the text type tool, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw out a text box like this. All right, and let's remember what we've got to write. Um, exclusive first, and I'm gonna double click back in that textbook so I can type. Uh, all in capital letters, E-X-C-L-U-S-I-V-E, -E, exclusive, and underneath, first. All right, let's, I think I space back there. Now, let's highlight it and center align it. Uh, if you can't quite see your alignments, Maybe you might see it in your paragraph, it depends on the size that you've got your screen set to, okay? But you can see it in either the character or the paragraph options up here. Let's center align it. Um, another trick you can do is I can put it in the middle of my text box by going to, by right clicking, I think, do, 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 fit in, no, not fit in. Oh, let's do that, let's do that a little bit, in a little bit on the next video. Uh, so let's bring that in. We want it to be about there. Now it's a bit small, so let's make the size highlight and come up here. Make sure you've got your, your, char your character set so we can change the size of the font. Now let's make it about that big, okay? And I'm gonna rotate it a little bit so it's on an angle. All right, now I'm gonna do these ones pretty quick and you can spend time making these as perfect as you want to. And then we've got test underneath. Now the font there is a bit bigger, so, um, and it's got an exclamation mark and it's also white. So let's draw another text box out here and let's call this one test all in capital. So we've got an exclamation mark. Uh, I could change the, fonts, the font type if I wanted to, but I'm not going to for now. And we'll just keep it the same. We'll talk about that in class, contrasting fonts and text. All right, let's make this nice and big. We wanna make it bigger than our original writing. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's bring it down in here. Let's rotate it. Now it should kind of snap to the same angle. When it's on the same angle, you get these green lines there that you saw. Uh, let's move it up a bit and I'm gonna highlight it and let's change that to white. Okay, paper's white in InDesign, that's what they call paper for some reason. And now all we want to do is, we want to have that kind of, that, that shape coming in here. Now it's too big, so I'm going to make it smaller by holding shift and dragging it down. And let's rotate it. And let's see how that's going to look there. All right, now we can't see it because it's behind. So if, if it's behind, just right click it and go to Arrange and you can bring forward or bring it to front. I'm just gonna bring it to the front so it's on top of everything. Bring it in here. Okay, now that's not perfect, but if I press the W key, you can see it without the, um, without the guidelines. Um, and you, but that's it, okay? It's not perfect, but you guys can muck around with it and make it perfect. So let's group this together. Right click, group it. I'm gonna zoom out. I'll press W so I can see everything else, and I'm just gonna move it off to the side here. Now this one here, there's a, we're gonna use the Pathfinder tool for this one, all right? All I've done is, is um, I've created a circle with a letter seven cut out of it, all right? Now it's, if I go there, if I put something behind it, you can see that the seven's been cut out of the shape. It's not actually text on top of the shape, all right? So the way that I made that was, is I used Make sure you can see the Pathfinder panel, which is here. If you can't see it, go to Window, and you should see Pathfinder. Where would, where's Pathfinder? It's probably in hiding. There it is there, Object and Layout Pathfinder. Click that, and your Pathfinder will come up. All right, so grab your Ellipse tool, draw out another perfect circle, just like that. Give it a fill color. Uh, let's, I'm going to choose blue for now. And then get your text tool, and let's draw our text box, and let's write the letter, let's just write maybe A, we might use it later this time. Highlight it, let's make it nice and big. We'll make it bigger than that. Okay, 
Might make it bold as well, so it's a bit fatter. And let's move this on to there. All right, now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going, we need to change, the text isn't an actual shape in InDesign, it's a little bit different, so we need to change this into a shape for, in order for the Pathfinder tool to work. Okay, so to do that, you go to um, Type, Oh, I can right click it actually, I can right click it and I can go to, now let's go back to type, create outlines, that's what we want. Okay, and that's going to give it stroke and fill and it's, it's actually turned the text into a shape and that's probably a bit small so I'm, now I can manually make it bigger because it's a shape, I don't have to go into the text formatting options, the character formatting options. So let's pop it on there, alright, and now we're going to you cut the top shape away from the bottom shape, all right? Now, use, in order to do that, you have to have both shapes selected, the circle and the letter, and go to Pathfinder. And the second option here, if you click that, which is remove or minus front shape from back shape, and that just uses that front shape and cuts out the letter from it, okay? So that's pretty cool. So that's one shape now, and you'll see if I add, uh, if I up the width of the strokes you can see that all right and that's that's kind of cool to make something like that um now whoops i seem to have lost this part here let's get that back on top of there all right let's have a go at making this one here step inside I kind of messed it up a little bit but that's okay um all right what we're going to do is, first of all, we'll grab um, the rectangle tool and we'll draw a rectangle out just like that, okay? And let's just give it a fill of blue. Sorry, that's a stroke. Let's No stroke. Let's fill it with blue. There we go. Now, um, we want this dotted line around the outside. If I just press W, you can see there's a dotted line around the outside. Now, mine's not very good because I moved the position of it, but that's all right. Let's, um, let's do it this way. Let's clone this by holding Option and moving this. So we've got two of these now. And let's give it no fill. And let's give it a white. And we'll give it a black stroke for now, otherwise we won't be able to see it. And go in here to the style and change it to dashed. Okay, and now if I click off there and press the W key, you can see I've got this dashed line. All right, now I want to shrink it down and fit it around the edges there. So I'm going to hold Shift and Option and click and drag, and that's going to kind of move everything smaller in proportionally at the same time. So let's go down there. And let's move it. Oh, oops, I've got them both selected. Let's move it on top of this shape here and see how it's looking. I think that looks okay. Let's make the make sure it's selected and let's make the points a bit thicker so we can see it. There we go. Um, and then if I wanted to make it a little bit wider, I could like that so it fits better around the edges. Let's change the color to white, the stroke to white. And there we go. Now all we need to do is write the letters step in, uh, the words step inside. So again, let's get your text box. Let's draw it out about that size there. Now step, it's written all in capitals inside. All right, let's highlight it and let's make it. Oh, that's way too big, 60, 48 points. Uh, I'm even going to go down because I want to, oh, that's okay. And let's click here and let's fit the three dots in there. All right, let's move it on top. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'll bring it down a bit so it's a bit more on that line. Um, now what you can do is you can highlight it. Uh, I'm I like the size, but I might want to stretch it a little bit, uh, to the gap between the two, between each letter. So if I use this one here, make sure character is selected here if you can't see it, and you can stretch the distance between each letter. If I want to make the letters a little bit taller, I can kind of press that there. Okay, press, and last thing, we want it to be white, don't we? So highlight it, let's change it to white. If I press W, 
um, sorry, I'll deselect and W there, and there you can see it. There is that nice little um, magazine design element. Step inside the cover. All right, let's zoom out here. It's W so I can see everything. Look, I might show you that one in class because this video is going a bit too long. So um, I'm going to do a second part where I'm going to show you how I created these three. Um, these three over here, these three design elements over here, which are a little bit more tricky, uh, and I'll take a little bit more time, but um, that's it for now. Okay, hope you liked it, Billy Bird. Um, that one was for you because you've been requesting a new video. Uh, so he's our school captain, so I hope you enjoyed it, and my year 10 class as well. Thanks, guys. See ya.